But, um, in this video, I'm going to discuss about definite integral. Now, but before that, let us have a view of the Riemann summation because this will help us better understand about definite integral. So if you are asked this question, how does an antiderivative of a function translate into the area below that function's graph? Right. So, so let us let us try to let us have this illustration. If f of x equal to k is equal to k, where k is a constant, its graph is a horizontal line of height k. Say, for example, if y is equal to 5, then if we plot na nimo, it's a horizontal line. But regardless of the value of x, y will always be equal to 5. Yeah. So, money and graph. This is the graph. Uh, uh, this is your function, which is a constant. No? So it intersects the y-axis at point k. At a value of k. Now observe that the region under this graph over the interval 0 to x is a rectangle, the shaded portion. It's a rectangle and its area is k times x or simply height times base. From plane geometry, it's height times base. Now, if you will get the, the antiderivative of k or the integral of k, integral of k dx, the integral is kx. So it's the same as the area. So therefore, the antiderivative is equal to <clears throat> the area below the function's graph. Another example, another illustration rather. If f of x is equal to mx, its graph is a line of slope m passing through the origin, like this one. So this is your function equal to mx. And again, for the region under the graph over the interval 0 to x, we can see that the region is a triangle. And its area is one half times base times height. One half base times height, or simply one half mx squared. And if we will compare it to the integral of mx, the antiderivative of mx is mx squared over two. Well, integrate mx dx. The integral is mx squared over two. So again. The antiderivative or the integral is the same as the area below the function's graph. So our concern later is how about for curve, curve, for curves? Not lines, but curves, yeah. So how, how do we get the area? Yeah or area bounded by two curves. Yeah. Now, let us have a simple uh, example about what we have learned so far. Yeah. Here's the problem. Greenleaf Skateboards has the following marginal cost function for producing skateboards. For up to 50 skateboards, the cost is $40 per skateboard. For quantities from 51 through 125 skateboards, the cost drops to $30 per skateboard. After 125 skateboards, it drops to $25 per skateboard. So if X represents the number of skateboards produced, the marginal cost functions C prime is this one, 44 from 0 to 50, 
from 51. Bali x is greater than 50. So 51 from 125 and 25 dollars from 126 to 150. So find the total cost to produce 150 skateboards. Uh, now, constant, uh, no, no. constant, 40, 30, and 20. So if you will graph, We calculate the areas of the rectangles formed by the horizontal lines of the graph of the marginal cost function. So if you will graph the marginal cost functions, this is the graph, no? 40, $40, the cost is $40 from zero to 50, and 30 from 51 to 25, and 25 from 126 to 150. So what we'll do is to calculate the area. These are all rectangles. So the total cost to produce 150 skateboards is found by summing those areas. So it's simply 40 times 50, 40 high times, uh, Height 40 times base 50 plus height 30 plus 75 plus 25 times 25. So the total is 4,875. Now the problem that we just solved illustrates the first steps of Freeman summation a method that allows us to determine the area under curve graphs. So the example is very easy. Okay, line Raman ang straight line, man, I mean horizontal line ang function. So for, for curve graphs, uh, we will make use of the rectangles no? to approximate the area under the curve. So, uh, Riemann summation is accomplished with the use of the summation notation introduced below. So, again, we will use rectangles to approximate the area under the curve because for curves, we don't have a ready formula that you can get from geometry. So, therefore, uh, in computing the area, uh, we will just approximate using rectangles. So in the following figure, this one, from A to B for the interval A to B, what we're going to what what we'll do is to subdivide the interval into four uh, uniform subintervals. Okay, so delta x is b minus a over 4. So this is the graph f of x. So for when a is equal to x, uh, when x is equal to x1, you will have f of x1. For x, x sub 2, f of x sub 2, and so on. Now, the height of the rectangle shown are, of course, fx1 to fx4. So the area of the region under the curve is approximately the sum of the areas of the four rectangles. This one, rectangle one, two, three, and four. So that would be fx1 height times base delta x plus fx2 times delta x up to fx4 times delta x. Approximate lang ni because as you can see, this area is not considered as well as this. But this area is considered, but it is not included sa area below the graph. So more or less, mag uh, lang, no? This one exists, if you will add this one, more or less, 
it will just be equal to this portion. You know, this region na wala na consider no. And that's why we have an approximate value sa sa area under the graph. Now, instead of writing this one in horizontal format, we can denote this sum with summation notation or the sigma notation, which uses which uses the Greek capital letter sigma. Like if you have if you have forty ka rectangles. Time consuming pag isulat ni mo ang 40 ka, ka areas, di ba? Area 1 to area sa 40. So, instead na isulat ni mo tanan, we can use summation notation or the sigma notation. Such as this. Hmm. Fx, F of xi times delta x because for each term, delta x is constant. What changes is the value of x, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4. So we can sum it up using sigma notation where i ranges from 1 to 4. 1 to 4. So this one is read as the sum of the product f of x i delta x from 1 to 4. So this is the sigma notation. Okay, let's consider some examples or a sample problem involving summation notation. Like this one. Write summation notation for 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10. So how do you write this one using sigma notation? Or summation notation. Okay. Note that we are adding consecutive multiples of two. Two times one, two, two times two, four, two times three, two times four, two times five. Right? So for each term, not a multiplier, not two. Two times one, two times two. So therefore, Kining lima ka terms, ano lang na siya? Summation of 2i, where i is from 1 to 5. So, when i is 1, 2 times 1, 2. When i is 2, 2 times 2, 4. Up to 5. Okay. And the answer here is 30. If you use your calculator, the answer is 30. Another one, express the sum of 3 raised to i from 1 to 4 without using summation notation. So what you will do is, what we will do is to substitute the values of i from 1 to 4. We have this, 3 raised to 1 plus 3 raised to 2 plus 3 raised to 3 plus 3 raised to 4. And the answer is 120. And again, if you, you will use your calculator, you will get 120. Uh, now, approximation of area by rectangles becomes more accurate as we use smaller sub-intervals. And hence, more rectangles. So, bale, oh, if you will use smaller subintervals, delta x, if you will decrease the value of delta x, it will result to an increase in the number of rectangles. And therefore, mas accurate ang value na makuha ni mas nearer siya sa true value. Okay. Here's a simple illustration. We are, we are considering the same function from interval A to B. Take note that in the previous na illustration, we only used four sub-intervals. Now this time, we use eight sub-intervals. And 
Mauni ang one. The shaded part is the approximate area. Oh, so, kini na part, wala ma consider one, two, three, and four. Pero, on the other hand, kini na part po na consider na supposed to be dili siya included sa dili siya included sa computation sa area. So, more or less, mag-balance lang. No? The value of this, pwede na ito i-transfer dere. But again, approximate ra makuha. It's not the true value. Now, this is for 8 sub-intervals. Compare na to sa 24 ka sub-intervals. Using the same interval ha, from A to B, but uh, smaller sub-intervals. Bale, gidecrease ang width sa rectangle. Ang result, may increase ang number of rectangle. And as you can see, ang area nga makuha is more accurate as compared to 8 ka sub-intervals. So in general, suppose that the interval A to B is divided into equally sized sub-intervals each of with B minus A over N. So N could be 4, it could be 8, it could be 24, or any, any number, any other number. We construct rectangles with heights. Okay, F, F of X1 up to F of X sub N. So F of X1 up to the last rectangle, F of X sub N. Okay, the width of each rectangle is delta x. So the first rectangle has an area of f of x1 delta x. The second rectangle will have an area of x f of x2 delta x and so on. And the last would be f of x sub n times delta x. And the area of the region under the curve is approximated by the sum of the areas of the rectangles. Like this. Mono ni ato summation notation na ni. Fxi delta x from 1 to n. Bale, any, any, any number. It could be 4, it could be 8, 24, or other, other numbers. Okay. Let us have this sample problem para ma differentiate na to. Yeah. and we'll be able to compare and see see ang difference sa, okay, sa value okay. value sa area okay. now consider the graph of f of x equal to 600x minus x squared over the interval 0 to 600. First, you approximate the area by dividing the interval into six sub intervals. In letter B, you approximate the area by dividing the interval into 12 sub intervals. Okay, solution. This is the graph. If you, if you will plot it, Money and graph. But if x is 0, f of x is also equal to 0. And if x is 600, f of x is also equal to 0. And then by symmetry, at the center, if x is equal to 300, that's the maximum value of f of x, 90,000. Okay. So for letter A, we divide the interval into six sub-intervals. The size is this. 600 minus 0 over 6 or 100. Okay. Money result. Okay. 
six ka interval starting with one two three four five six so with x sub i ranging from x1 equal to zero there eh? x1 equal to zero to x sub six equal to five hundred x sub one x sub two x sub three x sub four x sub five x sub six the value is 500 uh, x sorry x sub six equal to 500 x is one two three four x sub six equal to 500 thus the area under the curve is approximately equal to this okay. f of zero by f of x1 times delta x100 f of x2 which is 100 up to f of x6 100 the value of this one from f f of zero to f of 500 is the value of this when x is replaced by zero 100 200 up to 500 so here are the values. F of zero, 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 zero along 100, 600 times 100 minus 100 squared. The value is 50,000. Up to the last one, F of 500, 600 times 500 minus 500 squared. The answer is 50,000. And so, you compute ni mo, the, tot the total area is 35 million. Take the tie, it's 35 million. Now, if you compute the area under the graph, this is a parabola, and the area of a parabola is equal to two thirds base times height. Two thirds of 600 times 90,000, it's 36 million. Eh? The exact value or the exact area is 36 million. So for letter A using six sub intervals, we only get 35 million. Okay. For letter B, we divide the area or the interval into 12 sub intervals the size is equal to 50. Okay. like this one so our xi will start from zero x sub one equal to zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten x sub 12 is 550 500 600 so 550 that would be our x sub 12. This one. So, same long, but the interval is 12 now instead of 6. And the width of the sub interval is now 50 instead of 100. So, this is f of x1, f of x2, up to f of x sub 12. And the values of this, same as letter A, you substitute ang x sa uh, function. Like this one. Example, f of 550, 600x minus x squared. So 600 times 550 minus 550 squared, the result is this, 27,500. So, pag i add ni mo ni Tanan, the result is 35,000, 35,750,000. Now, this is much closer to the actual value, which is 36 million. So, letter A using 16, uh, six rather, six sub intervals, we only get 35 million. But for 12 sub intervals, we get 35 million. 
and expect that if you will increase the number of sub intervals, let's say 24, the approximate area is much closer to 36 million. Okay. So note that in the given sample problem, the approximation using n equals 12 is closer to the exact value than the one using n equal to six. So if we compare again for six sub intervals, we get an area of 35 million. But for 12 sub intervals, we get the area of 35 million. 750,000. So it's very obvious that if you will increase the number of sub intervals, we will get a value more closer to, I mean, much closer to uh, uh, actual value or true value. So the sums used in the sample problem to approximate the area under a curve are called. Riemann sums. Okay. So Riemann sums can be calculated using any x value within each sub interval. So, so the key concept being developed here is that the more sub intervals we use, the more accurate the approximation of area becomes. So let's always remember this one. Uh, the more sub intervals we use, meaning if we decrease the width of the sub interval, the result is we will get more rectangles. Okay? And therefore, our answer will be more accurate or more closer to the true value or the actual value. So as the number of subdivisions n increases, the width of its rectangle delta x decreases. Right. That's the point. So if n is allowed to approach infinity, huh? if n is very, very big, then delta x approaches zero. So instead of a rectangle, Pag daghan kayo ang n, it's possible na instead of rectangle, mora na siya line. And it's because ang imong delta s ga continue to ga continue to decrease. Ang width sa rectangle ba? Continue to decrease until it, it will appro uh, approach to zero. So delta x approaches to zero. So mora na siya o straight line. Now, these are limits and the approximations of area become more and more exact to the true area under the graph. So instead of rectangle, pag mura na siya line and mas accurate, tingi kayo siya. Kaya wala na may space na di liba consider kaya kaya nipis naman yung mong kwan. Gamay naman yung mong width sa rectangle. So the exact area underneath the graph of a continuous function y equal to f of x over an interval a, b is by definition given by a definite integral. Okay. So you have to remember this now. Let y be equal to f of x be continuous and non-negative. So it means that f of x is greater or equal to zero over an interval e b. A definite integral is the limit as n approaches infinity, meaning ang number of rectangles too large, very big. Equivalently, ang which rectangle approach, uh, approaches to zero. So more than a line. So a different integral is the limit as n approaches infinity of the Riemann sum of the areas of rectangles. 
under the graph of the function y equal to f of x over the interval a b. So the to get the exact area, it's actually the limit of this one, the Riemann sums, summation of f of x i delta x from one to n as delta x approaches to zero. Or simply, is the integral of f of x dx from a to b. Right. Notice that the summation symbol becomes an integral sign, the elongated s or the Leibniz notation representing sum. And delta x becomes dx. The interval endpoints A and B are placed at the bottom right and top right, respectively, of the integral sign. So if x f of x is greater or equal to zero over an interval e to b, the different integral represents area. The different integral is also defined for f of x less than zero. Now, in some cases, we can use geometry to determine the value of some different integrals as the following example suggests. So it depends on the function. So by plotting or by graphing, If, if, if the graph is a simple geometric shape, then we can use geometry to determine the area instead of uh, using, using integration. Like this one, determine the value of the integral of 3x plus 2 from 0 to 2. So if we'll plot this one, this definite integral is a command to calculate the exact area underneath the graph of the function f of x equal to 3x plus 2 over the interval 0 to 2. So we sketch the graph and note that the region is a trapezoid. Thus, we can use geometry to determine this area. Money and graph. Okay. Okay, so this is the area. Eh? Um, if you we'll plot this line, money ang, ang graph niya, 3x plus 2. When x is 0, f of x equals 2. And if x is 2, f of x is equal to 8. So, money ang graph niya. And the area under the graph is a trapezoid. So, let's have a review. The area of the trapezoid is 1 half a plus b times h. And ang a of b yan eh, muna sa ang parallel sides. This one, 2 and 8. While long H is distance between the parallel sides, this one, two. So, therefore, the area is one half, two plus eight times two. And it's equal to 10. So, instead of integrating this one, we use, we use geometry to get the area under the graph. But for curves, uh, well, I'm to direct na formula. Therefore, integrate nato. And so we have this fundamental theorem of calculus. So if f is continuous on AB, and f is any anti, capital F is any anti derivative of f, then the integral of f of x dx from a to b is equal to 
the antiderivative evaluated at B upper limit minus the antiderivative evaluated at the lower limit A. F of B minus F of A. So the fundamental theorem part one says that to compute a different integral, we need only to find an antiderivative and then evaluate it at the two limits of integration. Observe that this is a vast improvement over computing limits of Riemann sums, which we can compute exactly for only a few simple cases. So our Riemann sums, pag simple lang nga, simple cases, okay to, pero pag complicated na, ah, dili po siya, dili siya dali gamitin. So in using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we often use this notation. Now, instead of directly getting, uh, evaluating the antiderivative, antiderivative from A to B equal to the antiderivative evaluated at the upper limit minus antiderivative evaluated sa lower limit. So by doing this, this enables us to write down the antiderivative first. So isulat siya na to ang antiderivative before I evaluate siya sa endpoints or the limits. Okay. Sample problem. Let us use fundamental theorem to integrate the function x squared minus 2x from 0 to 2. So again, using the fundamental theorem, first is you get the antiderivative, and then after that, you evaluate its uh, endpoints. So what's the integral of x squared minus 2x? The integral of x squared is x cubed over 3, while the integral of 2x is x squared. 2x dx, 2x squared over 2, makansal and 2, so it's simply x squared. So we write this one. Okay? This is the antiderivative x cubed over 3 minus x squared from 0 to 2. After this, evaluate nato. This antiderivative evaluate nato when x is equal to 2 minus value of this antiderivative when x is equal to 0. f of b minus f of a. This one. So 2 cube 8, 8 over 3 minus 2 square 4 minus antiderivative sa at the lower limit. So zero to so zero. The answer is negative four thirds. And the other one is compute the integral of square root of x minus one over x squared dx from one to four. So integrate integral of square root of x. X raised to one half. Huh? x raised to 1 half dx, it's x raised to 3 halves over 3 halves. So you get the reciprocal, you get 2 thirds. And then integral of 1 over x squared, transfer x squared to numerator, it becomes x raised to negative 2. When you integrate x raised to negative 2 plus 1, it's x raised to negative 1 over negative 1. Negative 1 times negative becomes positive. And x raised to a negative 1, transfer its uh, denominator, it becomes 1 over x. From 1 to 4. And after this, evaluate the uh, upper and lower limit. You have this. Two-thirds upper limit, 4 raised to 3 halves plus 1 over 4 minus lower limit, x equal to 1, 1. And the answer is 47 over 12. Okay. So 
This is a good introduction to definite integral. That using the fundamental theorem, what you will do is just get the antiderivative, and then after that, you evaluate it sa endpoints or simply the upper limit and the lower limit. Okay, so thank you for watching.